Welcome to the Somatic Coaching Academy podcast with Ani and Brian. Join us as we explore the art and science of trauma-sensitive somatic practices and tools to strengthen your practice as a coach, therapist, or holistic professional. Master the art of motivating even the most challenging clients when you'll understand how to tap into and unlock your client's complete holistic intelligence. If you want to learn the most cutting edge, research supported skills for personal and professional mastery, you've come to the right place. Let's get this conversation started. Hi, and welcome to the Somatic Coaching Academy podcast. Hey, Brian, you're looking pretty good for 40. Four, I am looking good for 40. Happy 40th episode, episode birthday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We've, we've, we hit middle age. <laughs> we yeah, exactly, we yeah. have. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us through 40. Middle age is treating me pretty good so mm-hmm, far. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good to see you. You too. How are you? <laughs> good. Excellent. Welcome to episode 40. Um, and hey, just a shout out, uh, since we're talking about 40 episodes, for everybody who has rated and reviewed and sent us messages and said, thank you. We have people who I know are are uh, listening every week and waking up on Thursday morning is going, oh, it's podcast day. Mm-hmm. How exciting. And that's super exciting yeah, for us. So, right. so thank you so much for being a part of the Somatic Coaching Academy community mm-hmm. and listening along and sharing your thoughts, insights, and wisdom with us. It's, uh, it's been super fun so far. Yay. Yeah. 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 So what are we talking about today, Brian? Oh, right, Ani. So we're talking about uh, today a question I get a little bit, and I'm sure you get a little bit more from folks, is how how exactly do I talk to my family and friends about somatic coaching? (laughs) We actually did a bunch of that this week. It, we were uh, we had a family gathering, and there was a lot of extended family in town, mm-hmm. and everybody wants to know what we're up to, and yep. not everybody understands what we're up to. Mm-hmm. So there was some of that. Yeah, yeah. They're like, "What do you do?" And uh, well, how do you do that? And every question went to a deeper question. And I know a lot of people who um, study with us or want to study what with us ask that question. They're Absolutely. like, "Well, how do I talk about this?" And how do I? You know, I'm going to put air quotes here around convince people, and we're like, no, we don't convince people. Yeah, no. Like that's not what we're what we're trying to do. But that's the the I think the natural inclination is that people who enter into um, learning processes around somatic coaching are really excited about it. Yeah, right. They're like, oh my god, like I found I found it. Like I finally found something that really is helpful and amazing. I'm excited about it, and we just want to just share share it and <laughs> blah, blah 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 all about it. And then other people who haven't like learned about it yet. It can kind of feel like uh, overwhelming or disorganized in the way we're talking about it because we're so excited about it. Yeah, and it also can bring up all of our stuff, right, about how we're being perceived and what Mm -hmm. people are going to think of us. And so it can give us just the right Mm -hmm. stuff to work through using our somatic coaching tool set. Yeah, you just gave me an idea for another podcast. Oh, good. Okay, that's that's, just that's great. That Go one ahead and write that one down. Jot that down. Okay. <laughs> um, I think you really hit on something. The, the thing is that I, I hear this all the time with somatic work, whether it's people who have studied with us or whether it's people who have done other somatic kinds of work. Out there, somatic work is so profound in that it helps people to create the rapid and sustainable changes that they're really looking for. It helps them to transform longstanding issues Mm -hmm. that have been so challenging. And it isn't until they find the somatic work that something actually helps them to transform in a sustainable way. And so that is so profoundly awesome for the individual Mm -hmm. that we do want to share. I remember for myself, the very first time back way before we were 40, (laughs) <laughs> way, way, way a long time ago, uh, I found out about energy medicine mm-hmm. before there was a, a thing called somatic coaching, actually, you know, mm-hmm. like the the roots of one of the roots of the, the somatic coaching tree is energy medicine. When I found out about energy medicine and it worked for me and I had my own personal transformation, I did actually say that to myself. This was so mm-hmm. profound that I have to share it with other people. It felt like a calling. It felt like a purpose. It felt like a mission. And then what can happen is that we had this inner, beautiful, awesome, 
what a great word actually for somatic transformation, mm -hmm. somatic transformation. And then we go to say something out loud to people and we just go, Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it's, it's it, uh, even going through a process like that, you're still like, what just happened? It's ineffable. I, I, it's ineffable. It's just, yeah, there's not a great way to actually explain it. No. And that's cool. Right, because it is ineffable. And when we talk about somatic transformation, we are transforming things from before we were verbal mm -hmm. also. So I think we have to remember that because we're transforming things from before we were verbal. We're transforming things that have been lineage patterns that didn't even start with us that we might not even be able to explain really. Mm -hmm. And so just that fact, I think, uh, invites a pause to be mm. like, whoa, like this, what happened in here might not actually translate out to there in a really easy to understand way. Um, I actually just got an email today from somebody mm. who was uh, asking, their, their one of our students is creating a uh, landing page for their website and mm. they were asking me to, to if, look it over and see what I thought. And they were saying in there like, you know, it, am I explaining this right? Mm -hmm. And then I, said the thing that we say to our, our students, which is, you know, really talk to people about what they're experiencing and what results they want to see in their life, mm -hmm. rather than trying to explain things to people, really actually use some of those coaching skills to ask great questions and partner with somebody rather than feeling like we have to explain ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that is the challenging thing right now, because in order to explain and talk about somatic coaching, exactly as you pointed out, it's so important to understand the, the, the context and the, and the framework of the person we're talking to, what they already know about, what they, what is already familiar to them. Yep. And then understanding how to, um, ma mesh the idea of somatic practices, coaching, work. However, maybe we need to do a whole podcast on that too, by the way. It's like a whole just glossary podcast. Oh, that like sounds like of, you would like, really love that. <laughs> it's like, well, what's the difference between this and this and why that <laughs> and that? It's like just a kind of like, uh, because that that's where things also can get lost too. Well, sure. what's the difference between this semantics. and this one? What's that? Yeah, the semantics. But if you understand where someone else is coming from, you can more easily map the somatic practices we're coaching onto what they already understand. Can we talk about the neuroscience around that for sure. a quick second? Because this is how people think. We were talking about this a few episodes about comparison and what, what our brains do actually when we're listening to information, our brains are, are, are taking in all of the information and putting it into, I like to think of it like a filing cabinet. Mm -hmm. So we're putting the information that we're receiving into files in our filing cabinet. And if it doesn't match a file in our filing cabinet, we're not going to be like, oh, let's start a new file. That's not how our Correct. nervous yeah. system works. It's going to find the file we think is closest to it. Now, I don't see this happening all that often anymore, but 10, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. the file that many people would find in their nervous system, as soon as people would talk about anything related to somatic coaching, energy medicine, or whatever, Many people would find the um, woo woo weird things I don't want to talk about file. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't find that happening very often anymore. Yeah. Um, most of the time, people are finding some kind of file in their nervous system filing cabinet around holistic something or other because mm -hmm. it's so popular. Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting closer, right? We're getting closer because now someone might lump it in like the yoga file. Yep. And we're, whereas that still isn't accurate completely accurate. It's closer. It's totally right? closer. It's getting closer. It doesn't end up in some miscellaneous file somewhere mm -hmm. that becomes irrelevant or non-contextual mm -hmm. and things. And I really don't find people are putting it in the weird file very much at all. Mm. Um, whereas that really did used to happen. 15, 20 years ago or so. Yeah. Even in companies, right? Even in companies yeah. are more, uh, are embracing more now, even, um, morning, uh, breath practices in mm -hmm. to what they're doing, stretching mindfulness. breaks, mindfulness, right? Things, wellness. Yeah. Wellness stuff that yeah. they're inviting more of those things in where, you know, like 10, 15 years ago, that was a really, really hard sell in organizations. And now organizations are seeing the, the grand importance of all of it, uh, you know, from the massive burnout rates we're experiencing still, still post pandemic mm -hmm. that are happening, you know, 
um, a whole new world that we're really living in around how we think about work, how we perceive work, our capacities for work, our capacities to be um, pulled in so many different directions because of technology, all those sorts of things. So it's really a cool thing to see companies more broadly embracing just there's another file, wellness file yep. practices into their companies. And how we think about ourselves and, and human beings and being a human being, like the conversation about having a heart versus not just being brain focused is a conversation that almost everybody's having nowadays. Right. And yeah. so, oh, we're talking about maybe following the heart. I've heard about that. I see that on Instagram posts. So th that right there is meeting people where they're at mm -hmm. right, so yeah. they can start to put the conversation into a filing cabinet. First of all, it's not, I'm not even concerned so much about putting it in a filing cabinet that's relevant because they'll start to file it around as you have a conversation. But how do you meet somebody as, as, as you're starting the conversation so that they're not slamming the filing cabinet shut? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that they want to continue the yep, conversation. Exactly. And it really happens well through questions, really asking Absolutely. about the person. Wow. So, um, well, have you heard of this? Or does this make sense to you? Or have you ever experienced, have you ever experienced something? Yeah, that that's one of my thing. favorite ones. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing about um, somatic coaching, or let's just use the word somatic or somatics in, in, in a broad sense for a second. It's interesting when someone says, oh, I do somatics. It's kind of like um, uh, I do surgery. <laughs> and, Very broad the, and, and then your next question is on what? <laughs> what <laughs> like, kind? Are you a brain surgeon or are you a toenail surgeon? <laughs> I mean, there's like two different, like, you know, all surgeons are highly trained, heavily respected, but there's differences between what you're having done sort of thing, right? Yeah. And so it's a big category. So we have to kind of understand that even within somatic coaching, there are, there are levels of work within somatic coaching that start to get more complex, which is why it's sometimes difficult to talk about these things. We need to also address the fact that just like you were saying about somatics, the coaching file in the filing cabinet, mm. people have had all kinds of experience with that word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there are some people who are going to be like, oh, coaching, I know what that is. That's really helped me or my friend or this or that. You're also going to have the people who are like, oh, coaching. Yeah, I've heard of that. Everybody and their brother is a somatic co or mm. a, a coach. and um, they think it's like, um, uh, less than profession. Like there sure, are yeah. those people who are going to think that coaching isn't a real profession. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you start using the word somatics, like you said, that's a thing. As soon as you use the word coaching, that's a whole mm -hmm. thing. And there are just like you were talking about with somatics, what a huge range in terms of coaching. Yeah. Right. I mean, the, the term somatics, actually, if you can just do a real quick plug here, was um, first coined by Thomas Hanna, who is a, uh, was a surgeon, a doctor in the 80s who wrote a book called Somatics about uh, body-mind connections and how our physiology, especially our neuromuscular physiology, is affected by our attitudes, our perceptions, our beliefs. It's a really fantastic book. Um, it's a bit antiquated now because it's you know a long time since then, but it's still like a classic staple read around the whole idea of, of that word somatics. And there's been a lot of branching off since then to somatic coaching, um, <laughs> different somatic uh, therapeutic things, different somatic ideas, techniques, right? All kinds of stuff. It's profound how yeah. much things have grown since, I mean, when you said the eighties, I was like, that's not that long yeah. ago, Brian, but it actually could have been the late, could have been the late seventies. It's, it's somewhere well, I actually can go look still, if you want to wait, I can go look in my that, office and right. grab the I, book and tell you exactly. I don't really <laughs> mind that much, or, or you might need to put an, a, uh, put something and note for note the listeners the podcast, who are yeah. dying so, to know. <laughs> great, great book though. But there's, there's so much that his, uh, the, the whole world mm. of somatics is just broken open mm, yeah. in the past, whatever many years that is. Yeah. Can I, can I share kind of like the, uh, a basic framework of kind of the levels I like to kind of describe or talk about yeah, with, sure. with somatic coaching in particular? Sure. So I, I like to use the car analogy, not because are as humans were machines at all. I don't think actually the analogy that humans and machines are, are cars is like actually a good analogy, but it puts us on a map someplace. And if it gives us closer to understanding, then we'll go ahead and use well, it. Well, it's a great metaphor. Yeah, it's a great metaphor, but not not wholly accurate for my taste sort okay. of thing. But anyway, so I just want to just wanna let you know that. Okay. All right. So the kind of the first level when we think about if you start up your car, start up your car in the morning. And the, imagine if you got to start up your car and the engine is just like, 
like the RPMs are revving. Like say, let's say you start up your car and resting RPMs are like 1200 or something. Like, I really don't know. I'm not a car guy. So I'm just going <laughs> to put the number out there. But let's say you get in and you turn on, it's like 5,000 RPMs revving in your car. Now that would get your attention, right? Mm -hmm. You'd probably I'm think, you'd probably think it. something's not right here. Like, should I drive this car? Should I like, maybe I, maybe if I have an important enough thing to go to, I think I'll probably drive it, but is it going to break down? Is it going to explode? What's going to happen? Now, the other thing you do is get into your car and it could like, it could barely start and you go with your RPMs and they're like five or something like that. And so that's a problem too. So when I think about somatic coaching, that's like kind of like the first level of working with people is actually helping them to regulate their own nervous system. Kind of like if you get into your car and it's either revving up really high, it's probably not going to work very long or very well, or if it's under revving, that's not going to work very long. We want to get into our car and turn it on and have it revving at the perfect amount and an optimal window of rev in order for us to go ahead and, and have a functional or productive day, right? That's like a, a baseline need for that to happen. So one of the things that we do with somatic coaching and practices and those types of things is actually help people learn to regulate their nervous system so that on a daily basis, they're, they're in that optimal zone of RPMs in your metabolism, in your body, because we all know what it feels like to be revved too high. And that usually isn't um, productive for, to have a successful day. And we all know what it's like to feel under under energized and that also is not productive and i think we can all probably agree that we like and would prefer and feel the best and and enjoy the most life when we are in an optimal zone of revving so that's one that's like the basic line that i or the basic kind of first step that i like used to describe that reminds me of a technique we used to use in occupational therapy when i was doing occupational therapy with kids there was a program called um What's your engine speed? Mm. And we would teach kids about nervous system regulation exactly like that so that they could, mm, like yep. a car, see if they were super revved up or if they were too low um, so that we could help them to regulate a just right engine speed. Mm -hmm. um, so it was actually a fantastic – it was such a great program and kids understood it really easily. And Love it. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, it's great. And nowadays – um, we have, there's more nervous system, there's more, uh, causes and, and reasons for nervous system dysregulation than ever, ever before, ever <laughs> before, you know, uh, phones and computers all the our time, our connectivity, yeah. um, you know, financial stress and relationship stuff. And it just keeps compounding, yep. right? Life doesn't seem to be getting simpler from a human perspective. We just keep making it more complicated because everything we had a hundred years ago, relationships and work and those things are still there. And now we're just heaping more stuff on there. So there's all kinds of reasons to become more naturally dysregulated. Now we're in nature less. Most people are spending less time in nature, which is naturally regulating by the way. Yeah. Um, so we're spending a lot of times indoors under artificial light, looking at screens, um, whacking away on computers. Our, our downtime happens to be phones, which create more dysregulation. Yeah, we're sitting too much. Yeah. We don't have the eye contact or, or uh, eye gaze mm -hmm. stuff going on that we need to, the sounds that we're hearing. Exactly, exactly. Our senses are bombarded yes. quite a bit. Oh my gosh, I was at the gas station this morning getting um, gas, mm -hmm. amazingly yeah. enough. <laughs> and uh, there was one of those TV screens that comes oh, on. Oh, right on the, yeah, right yeah, on the Yeah, and we... Just had this, you know, few days off of family and out in nature and at the lake and stuff like that. And I was like, why is there a television at the gas <laughs> pump? Ah, oh, that's just that's the stimulation is all over the place. All the crazy. So we we might wonder, well, why do we need this now all of a sudden? Well, this is why. This is we, we used to have natural periods and natural cycles of auto regulation that we would experience. And now that's that's we not really happening anymore. We're more it. conscious of it. Yeah. So Somatic coaches help people on the on a primary level, help them make sure their engine is idling at the right speed. Yeah. So it could be like somatic coaches help people regulate their nervous systems. Have you ever felt just like your car, like you're revving mm -hmm. too hot or like yep. you just can't get it started? Just, have you ever felt? Have you ever felt like? So there you go. So that's how you start to talk about it to people. Like, oh, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. Okay, so do you have a problem with that? Oh, my God, I do. Well, I can help you with that. That's mm -hmm. that's what we do. Yeah. Now, if people are like, oh, yeah, I totally have that. Um, I, I have some tools to help myself, you know, be leveled 
with my nervous system. I, I am okay with the idling part. And the next question would be- Well, can, hang on just a second before you say it. that. Uh, really, what we're talking about here is somatic practices because the somatic practices are one of the key things yeah. that help people to regulate yes. their nervous system and get that engine speed correct. And it's really a foundational aspect. Yeah, exactly. Of, and it's okay. the core centering practices is what we yeah, teach exactly. people to help them yeah. In, keep a, that well-tuned, you know, spark plugs clean, right. clean gas, like all the stuff right. in their system. Right going along. Right. That's so that's what we're center. doing in our, in our somatic practices uh, program. Yep. Okay. So the, the next level is once someone is, has an idling engine, at least the way I think about it is to then learn how to actually shift the car into gear. And you have basically, you know, reverse and forward and there are different gears and forward, but let's just, let's just say for now, it's just forward, reverse or neutral. Remember the stick shift? Yeah, I love the stick I shift. I love the stick shift too. You can actually choose your gear. You can actually choose like, your choose your adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that now, was now, the best. Yeah, now they're hard to come by. They are. Anyway, so you have to con you have to consciously learn how to shift your shift your car, and so a deeper level of somatic coaching teaches people how to consciously shift their physiology. So they're they're idling. Great, you can idle, but can you consciously shift in the forward? rather than the environment stimulating that shift. So oftentimes it's like the way we get into the forward was like looking at our big stack of things we have to do, or there's an emergency, or we have to respond to a call. And so now if we're responding to the environment in order to shift ourselves in the gear, we're at big risk for dysregulation. Well, you're actually talking about the difference between responding and reacting, mm -hmm. right? Because we hear that all the time, respond rather than react. But uh, most people, most of the time are not, they're reacting to their external. And so, um, you're talking about is that being able to respond mm -hmm. kind of idea. Yeah. And even, even go a little further of actually learning how to plan. So in other words, yeah. if I'm planning my day, because there's the thing we, where we talk about, you, you only have so many hours in a day. Let's say you're awake for what is it? 16 hours a day. If you sleep eight, does that math add up? Is it something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Then if, if you don't plan what's going to go into those 16 hours, someone else will plan what goes in those 16 hours. And then you'll be doing what somebody else wants you to do for 16 hours rather than what you want to do for 16 hours. So I'm actually not only about reacting or responding, which are perfectly um, accurate what you're saying, but it's also about planning. Mm -hmm. It's like I can plan when I'm going to be going to forward. I can plan when I'm going to shift into neutral. I can plan when we're going into, into reverse and I can plan it and actually consciously shift my physiology, shift my own blood pressure, shift my own heart rate, shift my own breath capacity, shift my own digestive function to go forward, neutral, reverse based on what I have planned. Now what other people have planned for me. So this isn't just like basically calming down or speeding myself no, up. Exactly. So that's the that's first the step. First step is going back to neutral. Just a very generalized way. To, I just have to get my idle working. So once you're idling, now it's can I consciously shift my can I consciously shift my own physiology? Mm -hmm. That's the next kind of like the deeper the, the next step down. Right. Because when you could consciously shift your physiology, now you have so much more command over your life. Mm -hmm. And over the environment around you and over um, communicating through relationships and those sorts of things. Yep. Your emotions, how you act, how you feel, mm -hmm. what you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, so that's like kind of like the, the next level. And then the, the, we go deeper. It even goes deeper than that. What can somatic coaches can also actually help people learn how to drive the car. So it's not about sh only shifting into gear. It's now about shift. Think about your standard transmission again. You're not only shifting, but you're also turning the wheel. So I'm, I'm actually adapting both the energy that's in my system and with the direction that I want to go. B those are both really, really important. If, I'm, if, if those aren't matched up, like if I'm heading for a turn, if I'm heading for a curve in the road, then... I have to realize the the turning of my steering wheel has to match the speed that I'm going. Otherwise, I'm going to have an accident. So now I have to learn how to actually start multitasking within my own 
system. So it's kind of like if I'm going to go in and have a challenging conversation with somebody, that's like kind of like turning the wheel towards that conversation. I also have to be able to consciously learn how to adapt my nervous system regulation to meet that particular situation, if you will. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that goes a little, that goes even a layer deeper. So, and every layer we go deeper in there, it requires more refinement and more expertise of working with someone to help get down in there. Because if I had a major problem with my car, my steering or my gas or my shift, I'd take it to a mechanic because I know nothing about cars. And so for people who want to be able to be really, really productive in life and really succeed at life, that requires, by the way, their metabolism to be perfectly tuned, requires them to have the capacity to, to understand how to shift their metabolism up or down based on the demands that they're experiencing, and also understand where and how to turn their wheel in the direction that they want to go. That requires an expert to help you get under the hood, and that's a somatic coach. Yeah, and uh, we would love to think that there are mechanics for these things. You know, everybody wants to take the quote-unquote pill. Mm -hmm. um, we really do need to become our own mechanics and and ha and have somatic coaches in our uh, we, we do right <laughs> yeah, like like yeah, even totally. even when we're working with a somatic coach they're really helping us to become our own mechanic yeah you know it's funny i'm laughing you know we you know we had a couple of uh a couple of um cars in our past life that were difficult challenging where they was spent remember there was a time where we had two cars and every other week one was in the shop yeah <laughs> it's like we were always down a car because there was one in the shop and i swear i would take it in and i'd be to the mechanic, like, J can't you just hit it with a hammer yeah. and make it make, make it, it better? Go away. That's like the taking the pill, make right? It go and away. he's like, well, I don't know. It's like the sensor's doing this funny thing. We got to put it back oh, on the computer, that? and we have to do this. I'm like, can't that you just put ridiculous. some tape on it? Yeah. Like, just, I just need to disconnect work. the sensor. Yeah. I don't want to see it anymore. Well, a lot yeah. of people do that with their want to do that with their bodies too, right? Yeah. So a really good somatic coach helps you get under the hood in a really um, effective hopefully a way that feels really supportive to help you kind of get what you need. And this is, this is this, I know it can sound annoying what we're talking about right now, but this I think really is well, one way you can conceptualize this is it is like the embodiment of the natural laws of the universe mm. or what some people might like to think of as unconditional love, because there's more goodness for each of us. There's more love. There's more fulfillment. There's more joy. There's more peace. There's more of all of those wonderful things that we want. And the, uh, you know, the sensor that's going off in the body mm -hmm. is that unconditional love is that natural law. That's not going to go away to be like, Hey, there's actually more here. Um, and by the way, you can't put duct tape over the sensor. That there's the <laughs> whether you want to think about it as God or universe or nature or whatever has so much unconditional love for us that they're not gonna that the duct tape can't go over the sensor. Mm -hmm. Um, and what's underneath of that when we do understand somatic coaching skills is more joy, love, peace, and all of the goodness that that we want, not just for ourselves, but for for all of us. Um, and so, you know, looking at the sensor that's going off, even though it can feel like, believe us, we get it too, like annoying. And, uh, uh, it, it really is trying to help us. Mm. It, it really is. It really is, um, the neon sign that we're looking for. Um, and that, that's one of the things that I love so much about somatic coaching in particular is, we can do the work and we can do the therapy and we can do all of the things to try to live a better life. The body actually is the neon sign that we're looking for to be that freaking literal, mm. that freaking literal. Yeah. It's right here. Yeah. It's right there. And, and as, as you're talking about that, I'm getting this visualization of, you know, we all want to just like be cruising down the highway and take the top down. <laughs> and just feel that freedom. Yeah, the wind right? in feel our the hair. Wind blow through my hair. Your, yeah. Feel the wind blow wind through my hair. Scalp. Yeah, it's on my <laughs> across my head. So, you know, we just want to feel like the top is down and we just have all that freedom. And I think that's what most of us deep down inside really want to experience. And for some people, that's really frightening yeah, sure. to have that amount of freedom. Like sure. if I take the top down, it's gonna rain, or like the bugs are gonna get my <laughs> teeth, or like something horrible is gonna happen, and all those kinds of things. And so um, yes. So let's figure out, well, what, what Where is that coming car from? do you want to be? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how do you want to feel when you're moving in that direction? And that's what somatic coaches can help you do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess just to maybe, 
uh, say one more thing here about talking to people about somatic coaching. One of the things that we do all the time is we'll say to somebody, uh, how, what do you want to achieve or how do you want to feel in your life? And they'll tell you, and then you say, you can feel that right now mm -hmm. because you can, it's not the thing that we're, we're looking outside of ourselves for that we really want. It's not the having or the doing it's, it's a, a way of being, it's a way of feeling. That's what we're really trying to get mm -hmm. to when we, when we have those things that we want to accomplish, the things we want to have, the things we want to do in our, in our lives. And the, the way to get it even faster is to feel that way first. Mm -hmm. um, Love but, it. but just bringing it back to that felt quality right there brings it back to the soma, mm. brings it back to somatics. Yeah. And that's a conversation that we don't have to be afraid to have with uh, each other. And with ourselves, mm, yeah. how do you want to feel? Yeah. Can I put a punctuation point on that? Yes, that was an exclamation. Exclamation Mark. point on it. It's like that. That's, that's so important. I want to just pause right there because that is so critically important, the point you just made, Ani. And um, a lot of times when we teach workshops and trainings and we ask people, like, um, make a list of the things that you want to experience in life. And they say, you know, great job, great house, great this, great that. I want to donate a lot of money to charities and all that. We, it's so much fun to see like what people actually want to create in the world. And then we ask them that question, why? And they say, oh, because then I can help a lot of people in the world. I can do this and that. And you go, well, why? And, and we just keep asking the why question, the why question, the why question, the why question. And it gets them to the point of, oh, because I want to feel a certain way. It's exactly what you said, because I want to feel a certain way. And so if, if, when you're talking about or explaining somatic coaching, I think that's just another question to kind of keep asking people. And what most people don't realize much as exactly as you pointed out is that um, they don't realize they can feel that way first. And that's another thing that somatic coaching can help people do. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for 40. It just occurred to me that we're going to turn 41 really quick. Ooh. I was uh, getting a little bit nervous all of a sudden <laughs> about that. Over the hill. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> thanks so much for joining us this week. We'll see you next week on the Somatic Coaching Academy podcast. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode. We hope that this conversation will help you improve your practice and change the way you think about your work, your clients, and yourself. Continue your exploration of trauma-sensitive somatic coaching by listening to more podcast episodes at somaticcoachingacademy.com. You could be the trusted guide that people turn to to help them with their most challenging situations and to reach their most precious goals. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.